So I want to find out from each of you guys, like from both male and female perspectives, um, if you grew up without a father, do we call that daddy issues? And also, what are its effects on relationships? From a male and a female's perspective. I think daddy issues is beyond just not growing up with your father. You can have grown up with your father. Your father can be present in your life and you still have daddy mm-hmm. issues. Um, for example, if you have a father present and he doesn't give you attention emotionally, then you could end up with daddy issues. I'm going to agree that if you didn't grow up with your father, you have daddy issues. I do agree. Um, you're I say a father, if you didn't grow up with a father, and I also say if you grew up with a messed up father, yeah. mm. uh, you have daddy issues. But then now that we mean that we have to like explain daddy issues. For yeah. me, and like for me in this day and age, right, I can only think of daddy issues in the terms of like behavior. Mm. So for girls, right, if you have a friend that's that likes to babs, let's say, that like that doesn't mind the amount of guys that you have. So girls are the girls that we probably classify as the one that's like, high up there on the spectrum of daddy issues. Why? Why is that? You know, you know why it is? I think the thing is, um, like we said, daddy issues speaks about, about issues that you have with your father. Whether he was present or he wasn't present. Whether he was messed up or he, he didn't engage with you properly or, or he abused you, whatever the situation is. And a lot of the times when there's an absence, say the correct behavior of a father, of a good male figure, then somehow females tend to seek um, a good male, fi- a good, a good male fi- a figure, and and somehow um, females know that sex is one of the things that's going to attract um, men a lot, and so they try to use that as a bargaining chip in order to get attention. Because one of and the easiest male? way, one, wait, I'll come, I'll come to male. It's true. One of the easiest way for you to for a female to get attention is is through sex. I mean, that's why if a female had to walk across here. Um, you can't see how smart she is, but if she had to walk here with, with a bum short, you, the attention will get there, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's a way for her to seek attention and she's, she hungers for attention. Are you going to imply that bum shorts is seeking attention? It, it, in, in a way, you see that's a very <laughs> tricky thing. That's a, that's a, that's a tricky, that's a tricky thing. But, but what I'm saying is a tricky, it's a tricky situation. It's a tricky yeah. situation. The bum shorts situation is another topic. No, but you realize that you still haven't answered how men are affected. So men, <coughs> men have different, have, um, they, there are those who don't have a father, so they always, they always try to become that person that they're not. Or when they have a father, they try uh, get that approval from their father. That's how a lot of men have daddy issues. With it there, because a man, you have to be tough. You have to be strong. And if you're not as strong, you're not as tough. You're not as smart. You're not as fast, or you're not as whatever. You're always trying to to um, get your your dad's approval. So that's that's what that, what is that's what the issue. For women, it's like for for guys, it's not really. It's it's, uh, for that's most guys, it's not really. That's yeah, it's not really. Well, unless unless you guys you guys have a different opinion. It's difficult to like say that daddy issues. Are like one diagnosed set of, of criteria and all. I think it's a very broad and very different thing. But what I can definitely tell you is that with boys, they, they, they tend to be very rowdy. They tend to like lose themselves within like the environment. They, uh, um, the guys who start to like, do drugs more, they're, they're more, they're less, they're more restless, less controllable. In fact, I remember, yeah, 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 they become like really just crazy, you know? And in fact, you even see, like, there was this one thing we, we saw with this dating um, seminar where the men, the girl was saying, we want this, we want that. The men asked two questions. What is a man and how do I act like one? And like, those questions were so, were so real because it shows how there are no fathers, particularly in the SA's uh, setting, there is no sense of a male role model in many families. And if that isn't there, I can't tell you that they'll be like this or they'll be more sexual or that because that's very like self-dependent mm. but like they'll definitely have issues about how they relate to people how they'll even relate in the family structure that's what you said the most to your point as well for women as well for women yes, 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 they yes. don't like you said they had a seminar for relationships and how men mm, were asking mm, women mm. questions about how men should be to women mm. for women it becomes difficult because we end up not knowing how we should be treated you understand yes, yes, so yes, when yes, we yes, don't yes. have fathers present and we don't have anyone there for us to show us that when a man speaks like this to you this is wrong don't even accept it or when a man does this 
this accepted when we don't have that in place for women it's not necessarily when we wear bum shorts you know we, that's, that's how we retaliate and yeah. we you know showcase the fact that we have daddy issues you know what i mean i don't even think it's daddy issues it's just you just never had that important figure in your life that emptiness and that emptiness that is in you as a woman it's not being filled we're seeking for the approval of the right man to be able to know that when we interact with men this is how you need to interact with men it's awkward for me a lot when i interact with men because my parents passed away when i was young so when i interact with guys and men it's the most awkward thing like i never know like i never know if this person is actually having pure intentions or this person is just being this way because now i have a big bum or because now i'm wearing a bikini they think they can come at me in a certain way mm. and assume that the reason why i'm i'm wearing a bikini is for their benefit and it's for them to benefit from from how i look in my bikini you know what i mean mm. now i can't celebrate myself and like there's no one that told me that baby girl you can celebrate yourself and when a man says oh you look sexy and they're sexualizing you and it's not cool like i don't have a man to be able to say those kinds of things to me where it becomes then when i wear bikinis i'm always very insecure i'm always like oh, maybe i shouldn't wear like something that reveals because this man is gonna i have to think about you as well i think women need to stop thinking what we do is based on you know whatever your past is if I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, wow, she's great, I want to have sex with her, that's my motivation. Don't personalize it. Don't think, oh my God, this guy is a creature, blah, blah, blah. You get what I'm saying? Like, if I see you, you don't have to be wearing bikinis. You know, you can be wearing pants like that. And I'm still like, hey, I want to sleep with her. That has nothing to do with whatever your past is. But that's why I'm saying that but the fact that we didn't have a father, I'm we wouldn't have there. known that, yeah, that I'm that's your intention. I'm getting there. Exactly. I'm getting there. The problem exactly. is when it comes to daddy issues, I think that it depends on your mother's reaction as well. You know, because you get some mothers that antagonize men because, you know, like her guy left her, so now she's telling you, oh, men ain't shit, blah, 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 blah. It depends on your mother's reaction. And then you get some other women who take that stand and then you know they become your mother and your father you get what i'm saying so like with us guys i think we need a father figure for basically learning how to be a man what what doesn't what does being a man mean you know but at a certain age your father is there as your father but it doesn't necessarily have crazy influence you know your influence comes from who you are around your friends and things like that you get what i'm saying so like really your father doesn't have crazy <coughs> He has influence, but to a certain age. I feel like it's more about your father. Yeah. 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 So now when I ask you, so now yeah. let's yeah. say on a, on a real perspective, when you're in a relationship, and I think you brought up a very good point in terms of communication with other guys. My male figure in my life is my brother. He's one year older than me, but he's legit. So in my mind, the first interaction with guys is usually friendship. So I have great guy friends. Like I never get it wrong with making friendship. But when it goes on the other side of being subservient, sexual, all that stuff, it's very awkward. Even flirting, it's very awkward. So it's, I think it's very, and I'm in an environment, like I create a way to kiss, I was with guys all the time. I'm not uncomfortable with guys at all. But when it comes to like that romantic relationship, I don't know if you're right in saying that, that your male figure doesn't have much influence. No, it does. I think that you and your father had a yeah, relationship. I think I would have known, if I had my dad at home, I would have known how to interact I don't want to say romantically, but yes. romantically, yes, that's what. But see, can yeah. I just ask? I genuinely don't believe in the whole, um, the whole. He's singularly the the reason for your behavior. Mm. You've got twenty eight years of living. If you're twenty eight, you've got twenty nine mm. years of living. You're twenty nine, mm. and there's more influences in your life than that one person. And if you look at our historical contents, a context of how we grew up, especially in the African context, we had migrant workers. Your dads were always gone. And there's many people who grew up fine without dads and have this daddy issue kind of. I think it's a, it's a daddy issue is a, is a is a symptom of our societal discussions that we we needed to find a common reason to say who, what can we blame for people's mm -hmm. behavior. I think we're always trying to seek reasons and reasons that relate to all of us. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to find a reason like oh my we didn't have a dad and I didn't have a dad and that's why you turned out the way you were. But it's not it's hard to find the complexities of that relationship. Of with whoever it is. I think we, when I was growing up, they always told us that the whole community raised you. So mm. when I came home late at night and that uncle who was in the tavern drinking saw you walking past late, he's the one that gives you blows and tells you to go back home. So if I, I can't, like, I'm from like a whole Zulu 
background where it's like I don't see my parents are not romantic and I don't see that you know so how what did I what did I generally to, to am I going to be that type of person so I, I are you I, romantic are you like with, with your girlfriend I, I think I'm seeking myself how are I think you? I, I think <laughs> I'm <laughs> Because I mean, if that's what you saw growing up, mm. how are you now with your relationships? Mm. Are you, you know, you know, hey babes, like? Mm. Because Linda's saying something. She's saying that if you came from a context where your daddy, or what you saw, was non-romantic, yeah. that had an effect on you. It's not that we're putting blames on we're dad. Yeah. We're saying that whether your dad was present in terms of conversation or absent in terms of there was no dad at home, there was an influence that it had on you. But that influence being that you either you you find and like Van said. I, f I find that I can make friends with guys because my, my, my daddy is the person that I identify as my dad is my brother and I can relate with that but when it comes to relationship and I can identify is that you, you find it hard to connect with guys because I don't know how to act because I don't know what my context is other than friendship so and with you yeah. mm. what are you saying now what I'm saying I'm yes. old, but what I'm trying to say is that yeah. it depends also I think what I'm trying to get in the bigger picture is mm. singularity is easy I can say look I'm romantic in this relationship I'm not in the next relationship mm. but it also depends on the person I'm with I can, I'm like a person that feeds off the next person so if that person likes a certain thing I kind of mm -hmm. adapt and grow mm -hmm. and I'm also not the same person I was when I was 21 so the relationship when I had I think we're speaking about this other day where a relationship at 21 is not a relationship at 28, it's not a relationship at 30. What I was finding as romantic and sweet then was writing a letter or sending an SMS or whatever the case may be. Right now might not be the case. Right now it has advanced. So I can't, until I fully comprehend and grow myself, I wouldn't say I've reached the, the, the thing. But my to point, point. To, yeah, but my yeah. other biggest point is that what is a bigger influence on me? Is yeah. it watching days of our lives? Exactly. Was it my dad? But so what, 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 like what I wanted to know is, had your parents been romantic, you don't think then you would have had a template? Because, I mean, right now you're saying that you're still figuring it out and you're trying to understand how you can be romantic because it's different for everyone. Mm -hmm. You don't think that maybe if your parents were, you know, you know, more the way, you know, involved, yeah. would you not have had a template to know how to be Sometimes involved you know, you with your girlfriend? Yeah. It's difficult to just say that um, yeah. your parents don't influence you because yeah. they really, really do. Because yeah. I feel like if, if you had, you had had mm -hmm. that experience of seeing your parents kissing, touching, you would have known that something briefed you to yeah. touch yeah. me, yeah. aside, you know. Can I just say, guys, there's passive influence yeah. and then there's active influence. But it all comes to down to a daddy issue. No, but listen, you have to consider, you know, um, everyone here has, like, for example, yeah. uh, assuming all of us here have African parents, African fathers, so interaction is different. You know, do you talk to your father about these things, or do you just see them? But that's, I think that's, in what you're saying, I think that that's what it's trying to uncover. It's that it's saying that don't remove yourself and say that because I have because issues attached to daddy then I don't want to be the person saying I'm a victim and I have an issue but I will introspect and I will retrospect on my life and think okay cool I, I can interact with guys but there's a limit where I feel like I don't have there's a space where guys are like, nah, I've been hollering at you. Mm. Joe has been hollering at me, but I didn't know that Joe was hollering at me. And how do I bridge that? Mm. I, I think that um, we shouldn't... I think we all agree that a uh, good male figure is important. Mm. What I just want to say is that it depends on every individual how they take it. I'm going to use a negative example. Mm -hmm. If I grew up in a house where my dad was beating my mom, mm. I'm either going to beat my wife I'm gonna be on some. I don't like seeing that, mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna do it. Mm, that's very unlikely, though. It happens. It happens. It happens. You get the same with girls, you know. Once a guy starts raising the voice, they're like, mm, no, you know. Oh, some girls on, on some. Listen, you can beat me. It's fine because that's what they saw, you know. So I think we are all, like he said, we're all influenced differently. Um, and it okay, I need to ask you a question from that. Yeah. You know, psychologically, what they say is that you know you can say that, like, let's say you saw your dad beating your mom. What they say in psychology is that a guy can see it all the time, and he can even hate his dad. Mm. But after some time, when he's fifty or forty-five, you see that those same patterns happen again. You become what you hate. Exactly. No, so now, what I'm right. asking you then is that, that well, then what 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 percentage are you putting? Because Saying, just saying that, oh no, this is a social construct, like Sia had said. I don't think, I think that that's sort of removing the blame. I also think, though, 
it becomes a conscious decision like subconsciously you've been conditioned to know that a man beats up a wife growing up i'm just making an example yeah. growing up you grew up in an environment where your dad beat up your mom so in your mind what you know growing up is that men beat up women mm -hmm. but you consciously make a decision every day not to become that do you understand so what i'm saying is it's there it influenced and you. Some of our it's a thing that is there. So what you consciously do is you consciously every single day make a decision not to do it. Until it becomes in you. Yeah. Yes. But you're still you affected by it. But you were affected by it. It's there. It's a thing that is there. But when when a girl comes and snaps at you, you have to be like, Aish, yay, hold yourself, hold yourself. Mm. Because it's a thing that is there. You were influenced by it. You know what I mean? Bronson, I say yes, you are influenced by it. But I just say if you look at holistically, there's other mm. there's other factors yeah. into it. You're but right. you can't look at the whole <laughs> yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Right now, I'm saying, right now yeah. is that how have you been influenced in but your that's life? Point, as well. Well, why I say I don't like the headache with daddy issues. Because mm. mm. mommy issues, if I look back at the girls I've dated, it's pretty much my mom. Okay, what's well, so the subcon So that subconscious thing is there. And that's why I agree with you when I thought about it now. Yes, I agree with in the sense that actions that are happening at home, mostly the ones that are not spoken actions mm. are the ones that kind of Very ruin you. But it also happen. adds, I think it builds you and it's like building blocks. I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on someone's behavior and say mm. that will be a carbon copy. You're not a copy, you're a foundation. Mm. I'm a bit of my mom, I'm a bit of my dad. Right. Some elements I, I react like my dad, some elements I react like my mom. So, so that's why I'm saying I think what we need to look at is that how does those elements affect you and who's Who's the who takes ownership of that mm -hmm. of that decision ultimately? Because it, as we spoke about earlier, if, as much as my dad is is is, is 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 a if my dad is a violent person, mm -hmm. how 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 can I use that as an excuse to say I hate you because my dad and then you must sympathize mm -hmm. with me because I of that? I agree with what Sia is mm -hmm. saying. I feel like um, at some extent, like for example, you guys are making the example of girls that you know, trade sex for attention because of their daddy <laughs> issues, whatever. Um, <laughs> I just feel like at some extent that girl needs to take ownership and say that, hey, I don't know, maybe she likes sex or mm. she gets some sort of fulfillment from it, but she can't always bring it back to her father. Yeah. Wow. At Let's, some point she has to take why? ownership. Okay, maybe it is because not all influences are from you can't say holistically like I am a father. Holistically, there are self actions that also. But okay, let's not go far. Okay, let's not go far because yeah. you want let's 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 if it, your context is not sleeping around for attention, take that away. Okay. If you look at your own personal context, yes, and you say my daddy issue doesn't extend to sleeping for attention mm -hmm. but okay. what does it extend to where i can see this there's, there's a clear misunderstanding that i feel i would have gotten or didn't get by my relationship with my father when you look when you introspect i'm just thinking like for example the example that you guys made that um credo is your closest um mm. thing to reference, father figure, yes, yeah. reference to father figure right i'm just thinking okay personally if credo was my closest reference to my father figure right yeah. And then he was in my life, and mm. then I take okay the example of my father being in my life. Mm. What difference would it have made? I'm still gonna be awkward romantically. Mm. I feel I'm still that's me. Are that's you calm. awkward romantically? Is this what you you're saying? F, like, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So that's not me. I can't just because no, but wait, but I think you're wait, 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 I think you're missing a step. That's what you're saying. saying that you're awkward romantically, even with the father that you have. Which means you're speaking to something that I don't have. Mm -hmm. I don't have a father and awkward romantically. I don't yes. have a father and have a brother and I'm awkward romantically. Yes. But you but have then, a father, which is a completely different concept. Yeah, Why do you feel like so you're deep. awkward romantically with a father? Figure. Figure. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying and to say if you're awkward romantically mm -hmm. and I'm awkward romantically, but you don't have a father and I have a father, that goes to show that it's not the father. But your father is your father. It's my father. So you guys are saying, but you see, but you see, that's why I say, that's why I say, daddy issues is not necessarily when you're father. Yeah, but you see, that's why I say, that's why I say, that's why I say, daddy issues is not necessarily when your father is not, when your father is not. And you know what it does? Daddy issues create a void inside your 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 being, and that void. Is always trying to be filled with something else. That's why the, that was an example. First of all, I have to clear that out. I feel like everyone has daddy issues. Yeah, but that's not no, no, not, 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 not everyone, not everyone. I don't 
I would say I would say eighty percent of people have daddy issues. I would say eighty percent. I would dare to even say more than eighty percent have daddy issues. Sometimes you even have ninety nine point two percent. And then you know why that comes? That comes from the fact that what CEO was talking about how we um, our history has caused us to be separated from our father. If you look and you streamline everything, you'll find that when the father is not present, the father is acting hideous, is messed up. There's a messed up thing. Um, it creates a void. It creates trust issues because you feel like you can't trust this man because he's doing funny things or he's never been there. You can't trust him, so you don't know how to trust a normal guy. Whether he's talking to you as a friend or he's talking to your friend, you can't trust him. You have to, and then now you you have to do things by yourself, which makes you a strong woman. But you actually can't rely on people. You actually don't trust. You don't trust. No, you actually don't. No, I'm just putting my word. And then also for me, if I have to, if I have to bring it back to me, um, uh, there's a lot of girls that I've met in terms of of. Uh, you, you speak to them and you, you see that sometimes they become very, some girls become clingy because they're like, their father... Talking about you, we're talking about the girls. Yeah. No, I'm saying the girls that I've Basically, met. The girls that I've met. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll tell you about my, it's not necessarily daddy issues, but the girls that I've met, some become clingy because they feel like you're going to reject them or leave them just the way their father did. So there's a lot of things that are there. Some don't trust you. You're like, where are you? I'm at home. Ah! You, are you sure you're at home? I saw this video. Hey, I'm at home. I can, I can um, Instagram you or whatever that I'm not showing. Issues, with this you know issues, 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 issues of issues. trust. Just an interesting point that you keep on doing. I just find it very interesting that every single time we refer back to you about daddy issues, you literally cannot pinpoint it with a male. Every single time you bring it back to the actual. Okay, you know why? Because most most women are the one who have um, expression. Nah, I disagree. Expression. I think it's way more. No, I said, it's, I said it's expression. A weird example, but it's so it's boys. Boys is actually more. It's not really much about how we how we actually act. Although there is a problem about behavior, we become more promiscuous, become more reckless, do more crazy things. But I think the biggest issue is that we. We don't really express it the same way women do, but it definitely has a much bigger effect on us because it's our anchor role model. I mean, how am I going to look at some? I mean, for me, I can say because because what us personal things. I mean, I wouldn't know what to look at a form in a marriage if it wasn't for my parents. I mean, that's it. If you if you have a good uh, married couple and you see them like, okay, when I get married, I must look at them and have the same thing. Have a house like this, kids will go to this kind of schools, this is how I must treat them, this is what I must do with them. They will all come, the template will come from how your parents raised you. And I think it's more of just a thing of relationship. It's more about family structure. And I think the biggest issue with daddy issues is society. And like my second example is like, so in biology, there's this strange thing, it's weird. Okay, okay, cool. So I love the design like, school. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So then, there's some, there's some genes, right? There's some genes that are that are sometimes better not being had mm. than having one that's mutated, and because the mutated like protein that it makes is actually worse than if you didn't have it at all. And they're very important on um, protein. So you have an issue if there's no pro if there's no um, a gene, right? But if that gene is mutated, the new protein is even worse and there's even more things that are way worse than if you didn't have it at all. So I find that so many things in life are like that, just like fathers. In fact, society has said that it better not have a father to have one that's dysfunctional. Ooh. And that shows so much of how the dad role is so powerful because you can't say that it's so powerful that people would rather say, I'm, why get married? Why have a guy there to raise my kids? I do it by myself because they recognize that having a dysfunctional father is a lot worse than having one that is actually not there. Mm. So I, I see that there is a, such a huge tangible thing that if there is no father, there is some issues with family structure. I mean, if there's no mother as well, the same thing happens. The, the, the boys go crazy, the girls go crazy. I mean, everything goes completely crazy. And I think we must recognize that it's, there's more to it that is individual. I mean, I've seen people who, who have no father and they come up great. There's a, there's a psyche of a human being that is more than just your family and your environment. It's a whole bunch of things. And even in moments that you decide to act on, you can act and say, I choose this, and you can totally switch everything. There's more. But we can never ever deny that the family structure and no father has a completely huge effect. And you can replace a dad in many ways. You can get a, like, Uncles, but you need a whole bunch of uncles. Mm -hmm. Like, you need a village that you replace a dad. Exactly. And that's why, for Africans, we say that because we know because our dads were. My father's been around all my life. However, I'm going to be honest, I'm a very emotional person, and my mm -hmm. dad is on the opposite. So, if I don't get that from a male figure, I try and seek it elsewhere, which I've had instances like that where I've had awkward or uncomfortable relationships with males. And it's because I didn't know how to like interact or, or, or engage with the male because of the absence of that emotional, not entirely, but the emotional um, connection with my father. So 
to say that there is no direct influence on a female or on a male as a whole, I don't think that's true. There is an influence on a male having in a family because if you see a male in the house taking care of, for example, um, his wife or whatever, you're going to see maybe not a direct template of how you should take care of your wife or how you should take care of your girlfriend, but it's going to influence you in either way. If it's negative, it may produce a positive um Mm. You know, a positive reaction for you to say, I do not want to act like this, I want to be like this. Or it may influence you negatively where it says, okay, my dad did this, I think that is what is called love, or that is what it means to respect a woman in a relationship, so you'll do the same thing. And for me, I grew up with uh, my dad, he's always been there um, for the longest time. You know, I feel like uh, his influence in my life has always allowed me or given me some type of direction as to how I, I, I behave when I'm in a relationship, okay. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So. Um, I've always known how to treat a woman because I've seen the way my, my dad is with uh, don't be looking at me like that <laughs> I've always known how to treat a woman because the way I see uh, my dad um, reacting with my mom so for me um, when it comes to this whole concept of daddy issues it's not to say it's a bit foreign to me but it's like I feel like uh, daddy issues shouldn't always be a, a negative thing I mean I think you could have daddy issues and it could be like a, a positive thing I mean, yeah. That makes, that makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Explain yeah. for us, um, issue good. Issue is not a good I thing. I think, yeah, I think just having your dad in, in your life obviously is, is a positive thing, mm -hmm. right? So, but then on the other side, I've, I've, I've had friends um, who, who have never had their fathers around, ever at all, you know? And um, I've grown up with them from the time we were six, seven years old. So we've had, you know, we've had that growth and you kind of know, you kind of visit um, homeboy at his crib and you know that he's, he's, he lives in a house where it's like a single mom, mm -hmm. you know, and you can see the way he is, not when he's just not at home, when he's not at home, but like when you guys are out, are at mm -hmm. school, out, whatever you guys are doing, and you can see that there, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. I've seen that uh, the way he or they would uh, act around other females, what it's is completely the difference? different. Yeah. And I'm beginning there. Mm -hmm. It's completely different the way I would act or uh, would uh, behave around other females, you know, um, the whole concept of, all right, uh, your dad is not in your um, immediate life or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, if you're going to have an issue with a woman, the only way you're going to address that is uh, by viol uh, using violence or by automatically they would jump onto uh, the closest thing that they can have yeah. to like, you know, deal with the situation. Brian, yeah. let's ask you a question. What do you feel about Brian's question, Brian's example about an absent father is better than no uh, sort of a terrible father? father. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Whew. No, I, I don't think I can agree with that. I feel like just the presence of a... Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think yeah, even, even a bad father... Yeah. Um, I even think a even, even a bad father um, in, in someone's yeah. life, I think in, in the life of a young man, um, I think having a father uh, even if it's bad or whatever, I think it's better because there's certain things I think sure. or feel that only a man can teach um, so their son. Bad, rather be told. Can I tell you what no, what baby is saying? Right? Let me finish. So <laughs> <laughs> um, you see, I'm <laughs> 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 If you have a father yeah. who is like completely oh, bad so influence funny. in your life, um, uh, compared to a father who's like not there at all, mm. um, there's certain things you can never learn. Um, even if, like, you find out that uh, it's only women in your life. You know, you, you've got mother, you got your mother, you just have sisters. Because you have a father to yes. tell us what you've, you've learned. learned. That's um, only a man can teach you. That's oh. only a man can teach you. Yeah. Uh, certain things like <laughs> how to love a woman. How to love a woman. <laughs> like, uh, a woman but you have to love a woman. Yeah. 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 You know, we'll show you that, listen, there are their do's and their don'ts, mm. you know what I'm saying? And only you know how to obviously tailor that to the way you're, you've grown up okay. with your experience. So what you're saying, if, if a well, dysfunctional father, father was there, mm. and he's going to... What is a dysfunctional do, father? You're saying that, okay, I can understand your point in terms of saying that um, um, you disagree with the Brian, mm. saying... Um, no this, but having it's rather it's better to have a dysfunctional father yeah, than no father, no, no father at mm. all. So and with the ex, ex, um, with the, <coughs> the example that you gave, because we're listening to this other book with Greta in the car, and there was this guy, he was talking about him and his brother were in a household where a fa the father was a drunk, and then one of the brothers, um, when they grew up, 
they turned out to be a drunk and the other one turned out to be very successful married and he was just like a great guy mm. and then they asked them a question in the room mm. and they say why are you the way you are and you had to write down mm. the, the answer and both of the answers were because, because of, of the way my father was mm. so i can understand the the, the the idea that yes what better can contradict you is like I'd rather have someone there than nothing okay. at all. But, but wait, but wait, but that goes to Sia's point in terms of at that stage, if the community raises you, you can see an uncle, you can see a teacher that takes care of you mm. as a father would, and you understand your con your context may not be one where your father's but present, but, but your different. environment is one where you see exposure mm. to father-like figures. So right now, I can say I didn't have a dad that's my DNA dad because yes, yes, he passed yes. away, but I had a great uncle who showed me love. So yes, I don't yes, think yes. that there isn't there isn't. There isn't something that I'm missing, but I can identify my daddy issue. Mm. I can identify that, yes, I don't have a biological dad that stays with us yes, and whatever. Yes, yes, yes. But I've had such great male influences that I know what to look for in a guy. I know what that you, 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 I'm, I'm going to get there. I know that you speaking badly to me is not, is not going to go. I mean, it's not, it's not a, it's a no-go zone. But at the same time, I also know that I'm mad awkward with guys. Like when people tell me they like me too quick, I'm just like, dude, you just want to babs bye. But someone can literally like meet you in a month and actually like you. you so you don't, because I've never had a consistency of someone in my household as a man, I don't identify with a consistent man. Mm. You know what I mean? Thing, but That's I don't true. feel yeah, like, I don't feel like if I had a consistent issue. issue. But I can identify. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is that I don't think that if I didn't, if I had a, if I had a consistent father, even if he was a drunk or whatever, but I would understand a, a certain amount of consistency in men. Like, yes, you could be a drunk, but you're there. But you so, know, you see, but like, I, I don't think that, I'm not saying I would turn up there. No, but what I'm saying is that, I don't think I'm going to turn out, but wait, 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 I'm not saying that I'm going to turn out better, but yeah. I can understand in a context <laughs> that when you have a dad, I'd rather have this one. I, there's people. No, I, I, I can understand it. I don't know, but I can understand I'm going to speak to you. I don't agree with what he's saying. Which part? Like, having I mean, a dysfunctional dad as well is better. Yeah. Oh. Is oh. better. Is it having nothing at all? But because dysfunction can is too broad of a spectrum. I mean, even if it's not the two other two people. I mean, you're forgetting that one did turn out to become dysfunctional himself. I mean, it's like if the father wasn't there. That's a good that's 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 the question I think that the problem is is that there is a lack of identification. We that's always true. want to jump to conclusions, but, that's like but we one don't of want the to identify that. that, that. Wait, 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 Brian. I don't want to identify that the fact that yes, I have a father. He provides, but he doesn't speak to us. Yes, that's yes, a dysfunctional yes. father. Yes, but yes, in yes. your eyes, it's a prison father so poor. because you don't know the intricacies of my of my family. Uh -huh. So you think you see my father, you see him getting along with my mother, and you see him there, but you don't know that he doesn't speak to us as children. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be a drunk. He doesn't have to be abusive. But he doesn't speak to us. So in your he's in your no, context, no, no. I didn't you know, say no. you know, if there's an absence of that of the father, there are things that you're going to lose. It's not an ideal um thing. In fact, the ideal is to have a father. It's all remember that the, the ideal is to have a father, a good father there to 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 help you down that road. That's what the ideal. But when you have no father, there are things that you lose. But when you have one that's dysfunctional, there are so many things. You may even gain something here, but you lose so much. The trauma, if he's out there, the all those things. I mean, those things will affect you when you're gonna build your own family, when you're gonna meet your own men. It's gonna affect you. I mean, no, can you ask for different people? Yeah. So if you're dead, it's gonna be who's dead every day. Is that dysfunctional? What is this? What is this? No, 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 no. But I rather have those issues that you were saying about now with romantic things, all those th those things, than have the issues of having to deal with somebody who was traumatically and traumatized me, and having and, and now and now it's even worse because I've actually identified with that trauma. Mm -hmm. Now I actually want that. Like now that's that's how I. As, as my own person, identified and seen how life will be. That's way worse an issue to have than the issue that you are saying now of Credo and the void that has been left because there's no father. And I don't understand how you would actually, I mean, it's the same with children. I would never ever choose for a child to have the traumatic dysfunction of dad over the one who wasn't there. Never. I, that, that's not a, a okay. like, right? Hey, first of all, there are exceptions. I mean, when your dad is completely bad, 100%, you don't want him in your life. But every case is different. So we can't create like a whole um, method that applies to everyone, mm -hmm. right? But in cases where your father is 70% good, 30% always at work ignoring me. 
you must rather take that 70% because it will build you. It will yes, help I you. Would, I would. People are saying is that the bad influence that the father does come with, the psychological bad influence, is something that can stay <coughs> with you for a very, very for a longer period yeah. of time. Yeah. The yeah. ten good the ten percent that is good is it's not gonna not stay gonna with you. Stay What's gonna happen. stay listen, I'm not listen to what I'm saying. What's gonna stay with you is him telling you that you're a killer mm -hmm. and him telling you that you're a bad person and him but then you get lucky in life and you get exposed to a great coach who's a great and positive male figure who then builds and establishes you as a man. The point that I want to make personally is that I also got a blessing of having to be raised by my, uh, my mom's older sister with the husband. But now it was so dysfunctional in that that my dad used to physically abuse my aunt to the point that every, like almost like every month, every, you know, first week of the month, I'd have to like, you know, she'd be like broken, like broken bones, blood, and I'd have to be like, okay, let me call the, you know, ambulance, go to school, come back, she's back, she's okay. That was my, that was what I knew. And her telling me that it was my fault that this was happening to her, those are things that I knew. So after that, immediately, I, like, maybe in high school, I then got involved in a five-year relationship that was emotionally abusive, but I didn't see that it was emotionally abusive mm. so what I'm trying to say is that I m m like psychologically that's what I knew growing up mm. I got into a five-year relationship where people from the outside would see this is a bad relationship but me inside I'm like no this is oh, this is normal you know oh, to the point that even in primary when I was a kid and I was at school I was like you know kid the white kids would be like oh my mom and dad are like we're wrestling and having fun and stuff you know they were like quarreling a bit and I'm like yeah like how your dad beats your mom up you know for me that was like I thought it was like a normal thing, you know. Especially so when you're young and it's a normal, it's a normal thing. People telling me it's wrong, I don't see what they're talking about. This makes sense for me. Mm -hmm. Until I had a spiritual father who started talking to me and told me that, Linda, your op your opinions matter. Who you are as a person matters. Mm -hmm. When you disagree with a person, it matters. Before I didn't disagree with mm -hmm. anyone. I was mm -hmm. like, what you so, say as a guy mm -hmm. is one hundred percent correct. Like, so that influenced the negative. 10% influence, the positive 10% influence it's doesn't cool stick as much as that bad when they are in a dysfunctional thing with their dad That's firstly awesome. they don't recognize that it's a dysfunctional situation oh, and then after that they don't walk out of that dysfunction they stay in the yes. realm of that dysfunction yes. because of the fear of the unknown. So when another person comes with positivity, they don't recognize no, that as positive. What's positive to them is the dysfunction. The so when the positivity comes, so what it's like, saying? what's what's going on? Who are you? Why are you talking to me the way that you're talking to me? Mm. Right. So for me, the problem is that when I, when I ask the question, is that I speak about sperm donors, I speak about actual fathers. Mm. I'm talking about the fact that in society we let go of a president that does corruption or someone who steals, and then you're shocked. When some people, when other men start behaving, when you have a mi minister, or when you have a, a minister or something, a deputy minister beating up a woman, and then he gets a position again, mm -hmm. and then we defend that action, and right. then at the end of the day, and then we say, oh, we have lack of fathers. For mm -hmm. me, we're all fathers, irrespective of your cradle very, very or right. you're someone crossing the road or security guards. I've been raised by right. by security guards at Kips who sat with me when my dad was picking me up at five, so and right. those are the guys that gave me the building blocks mm -hmm. of what. And so it's not just about. People your who are personal in your family. father, yeah. it's also like the authorities that are made exactly. that influence exactly. you to say that as much as Brian, I see your point of view, but I think that it's it's outside looking in. And for the people that are inside those situations, they probably if they told them no, you can live alone without anyone of your relatives mm. and you in a functional family, they would have still chosen someone mm. that they linked to. Mm. So there's a reason why we have relatives and there's a reason there's something, there's an emotional attachment that as humans we'd rather choose this function, but as long as you're related to me, mm. it comes from somewhere. Because we know that we are influenced by other people in our community. But the fact that you're my blood and I'm still with you and I'm sticking with you means something to me and I'd rather choose you as my blood.